Hi guys, so today we are going to learn about chapter 6, which is deformation of statically determinate structure. So this is example simply supported beam when a uniform distributed load applied on it. So we can see that when a load applied on the structure, it will cause the displacement which is Y and also slope for every location. And also this is the elastic curve for the trend of the deflections. So we need to know about the boundary condition for the supports. So we need to remember that for fixed support, which will cause zero slope and zero displacement, because at fixed support, you will know you will do you will not even have any displacement and slope. So pin and roller support, you will have zero displacement too. Okay. So these five equations listed here is the important equations that we will will be used during this ch chapter. Okay, so for number one, EI d power 4 y over dx power 4, this is force deflections equations. And EI d power of 3 y over dx power of 3, this is shear deflex, uh, deflections equations. And EY d power of 2 y over dx power of 2 is the bending moment deflections equations. Okay, and EI d power, dy over dx, this is EI theta, also is called as slope deflection equations. And EIY is this equation is for deflection equations. Those so these three equations are the most important one because you from the moment equation you will integrate and then become this slope deflection equations and you integrate it again you will become the deflection equations. Okay, so this is the formula for how it been integrated. So procedure for analysis. So first, you need to draw the free body diagram of system. And then number two, you need to do the section speed if necessary. And number three, you need to draw the free body diagram of each section. And then number four is you, you need to use the equation one if QS is known, or else you need to use the bending moment deflection equations. And then you integrate it and then to solve the yx. And then after that, you use the boundary conditions that I mentioned before that to solve the value of C. So this is the state of it I listed here. So you can see that from EI, D power of 2Y over DX power of 2MX, you integrate become EI DY over DX. And then this is also called EI theta. And then you integrate it again, it will become EI Y. Okay. So after that, I will explain to you what is the boundary conditions. So this can, you can see that this is a fixed and free end support conditions. So you can see this equation, okay? So at x equal to L, y is equal to zero. At x equal to L means that here, here is the fixed support. At fixed support, deflection will be zero because here it is being fixed. So there will not occur any deflection. And x equal to L, at here, there's no deflection. And then here, the dy over dx will be zero, okay? So at support, there's no deflection and no slope. And then at free ends here, because you can see that will not apply, of course, at the free end will be the highest y occurred, which is the y max, the deflection maximums here. Okay, so number two, you can see that this is a, sim this is a simply supported beam. This example, you can see that at support A and B, you can see that x is zero, y is zero, and then theta will be unknown. But then at x equal to 0, y equal to 0, theta will also be unknown. Means here the, the, the slope here is not 0 and then it will be changed according to the location. But then at y equal to y max, which is at the middle, you can see this curve. Because this is the uniform, load distribu uniform distributed load applied on the whole beam. And then the maximum load at the maximum Bending will be happen at the middle. So the y max is at the middle. So theta equal to zero because it's changing from here to here and then it will have a peak at here. Then the theta is zero, the slope, but then the y is the max. Okay. So at x equal to zero, y equal to zero. Here is the support and L is the support at here. So here at this point and this point, the y will be zero. Okay. So another example is number three over hanging beam. So you can see that it's the same thing also, x equal to L, which is at the support, y equal to zero. And x equal to L plus L1 means this here, the support is zero. So I think every one of you, you must remember that at the support, y is zero, okay? And then at the y max, the theta is zero, okay? So we go to the first example. So this example 4.1 in the module, you can see, okay? 
The cantilever beam with length L shown in the figure is subjected to a vertical load P at x n. Okay, at x n here. So determine the maximum slope and deflection using double integration method. And the EI here is constant. So what is the y max and what is the theta max here? Okay, so the solution is we need to cut the beams. Okay, we need to cut the beams. Okay, you can cut it either the left side or either the right side. Okay, and then we need to first determine, we need to identify the boundary conditions. So you can see that as I mentioned, the people mentioned before, y is 0 when it's at the support and theta is 0 at the support for fixed condition. So you can write down here first. And then number 2 is you need to draw this free body diagram and then the cut sections. You can see that, okay, when you cut it at the meters, so P applied here, and then the V is going down, the MX is going uh, counterclockwise. So this is the equation. The total moment at X here, the cut section here, is equal to negative MX because this is the direction. Okay? The negative MX minus P, P time X. Okay? This is the moment occurred due to the P. So moment, you move it to here, this is equal to zero. So MX equal to negative PX. So we can we know that mom, the bending moment equation m is e i d power of two y over d x power of two, so equal to m. Okay. So other than that, besides you can cut from the left, you can cut from the right also. But when you cut from the right, you need to find the support reaction. So it will spend more time. So it's better for you to cut at the left side, which which this one you know need to calculate the support reaction. Okay. So after that, you can start to using the moment equation, which is just now negative Px. So this is the EID power of 2y over dx equations. Okay, it's also the moment, so it's negative Px. Okay, so this equation, when you integrate it, okay, it will become the slope deflection equation, which is EIDY over dx. So when you integrate negative Px, you will get negative P x power of 2 and then this bring it to here then equal to negative p x power 2 over 2 plus c1 okay so you integrate it once again you will get e i y so e i y equal to negative p x power of 3 because this plus 1 and then bring it to here the bottom part so equal to negative p x 3 over 6 plus c x and plus c2 so here you have 1 2 3 equations which is for the Bending moment equation, slope deflection equation, deflection equations. Okay, so after that, you can apply the boundary conditions, which is just now you listed before. Okay, so at x equal to L, dy over dx is 0, means the slope is 0. You can input into question number 2. So when you input into question number 2, you can see that negative px power of 2, power of two over 2 plus cx right plus c1 sorry plus c1 equal to zero because the slope is zero okay so c1 equal to negative uh, equal to px over px power of two over two so c1 you get the value of c1 is pl power of two over two okay so after that you apply another boundary condition which is x equal to l and y equal to zero into equation number three so negative px3 over 6 plus C1x plus C2 equal to 0. So you input the value of L e x equal to L and then input the C1 value from previous calculations and then you input the x equal to L into the equation you, then you will get equal to C2. So C2 equal to PL over 3, uh, PL, PL power of 3 over 6 okay and then minus PL power of 3 over 2 okay so after you simplify it, you can get C2 equal to negative PL3 over 3. So this is the calculation for how we get this. So after you get C1 and C2, then you can substitute the value of C1 and C2 into equation number 2 and number 3. So you will get EI dy over dx is also EY theta is equal to negative PX power 2 over 2 plus PL over 2, PL power of 2 over 2, okay? So, EI slope here is equal to negative PX power of 2 over 2 plus PL over 2, PL 2 over 2, 
PR power of 2 over 2, sorry. So theta equal to this, you, when you simplify it, then you finally you get theta equal to P over 2 EI times L power of 2 minus X over 2. Okay, so EIY also the same thing. You substitute the values of C1 and C2 into it, then you will get negative P X power of 3 over 6 plus P L power of 2 over 2 times X plus negative P L power of 3 over 3. And then you simplify it, you will get this value, this equation, sorry. So the maximum slope theta and displacement y at x equal to 0 because just now is fixed, the free end is at x equal to 0. So we input the x equal to 0 into equation number 2 and number 3. Okay, so this, uh, the new equation, sorry, the equation number 4 and equation number 5. Okay, you input into it, so P over 2 EI times L power of 2 minus X power of 2, then you will get L, then you get P L over 2 over 2 EI. Okay, so for Y at A, which is X equal to 0, is equal to P over 6 EI in the bracket 0 plus 3 P L power of 2 times 0 minus 2 L power of 3. So after that, you will get negative P L power of 3 over 6 EI. So from this calculation, you will get the maximum slope and the y. So if you want to get any value for the the slope and also the deflection, at any location, you just input the value of x accordingly. Then you can get the answer. Okay, so this is the part 1. Then later part 2 video, I will give you the example of another double integrations method. Okay, bye-bye.